And let me tell you about the Higher Self Expo July 2021. It's a 24-hour event with 33 guest speakers who are sharing their wisdom and exploring the connection between science and spirituality. Today's guest is a guest speaker at this event. To register your place and find out more, go to www.higherselfexpo.com. Hey everyone, it's Louisa Tanamunson from Feel Good Astrology and I've got a feel good conversation for you that I think you're going to enjoy. So I'm talking to somebody, uh, my mystery guest is somebody who um, is known as a walk-in. So the phenomenon of where a soul departs his physical body earlier than um, expected and another soul comes in to take his place. Um, so this is the experience that the person I'm about to talk with has had. Um, it happened in 1996, December the 20th, 1996, funnily enough, my birthday. And he, um, uh, I, I guess it's like being reborn into a body that already has its life. You know, there's the identity there. And my guest was able to keep in his full presence of um the experience of the world. So for instance, you know, like when we're born, um, you know, many of us that are watching this will have had um, experiences where um, they know their, their grip on reality, all of a sudden they have a sudden um, intuition or knowing or what's known as an isness about how things really are. Like you might have a sensation that actually what we see in front of us isn't quite the way it is. And we might have a feeling, um, which some people explain as um, a remembrance from past lives and things like that. Um, but we have a sense of something that that comes out of nowhere. And there is this common idea that there is a veil that comes down as, as we're born here, that we forget who we really are. Um, and so this is the kind of fundamental stuff that I'm talking with my guest about, because he is in this body in this realm with us right now. Um, and he doesn't have any forgetfulness. He remembers everything. He can access everything. He has a, a pure, clear, um, ability to connect with anything, um, in, in, in this realm, in the universe, um, whatever you want to refer to life as he is in He's in communion with it. So we're going to be talking today. Um, I've called this walking back to happiness um, after the Helen Shapiro rather happy number. Um, but it's it's an homage to the fact that he's a walk-in and he's going to be talking us back into happiness. <laughs> so there's a bit of a play on words there. But we're going to be um, talking about the vibration of happiness, what's behind it all, um, how the uh, you know, how life is coded, for instance, and we're going to be talking about health um, and a little bit about finances right at the end there. We we're talking about the potential of um, how finances might change and what's going on. We're also talking about the future of humanity, like what's going on with humanity. Are we going to be raising our game? Are we awakening? Are we collectively awakening? So let me just tell you a little bit about him before I introduce him. So my guest today is William Linville. He's a divine presence of clear creator consciousness. He's here on the planet to assist you to clear out all of your egoic conflicts and structures that have held you back from fully, completely marrying with your higher selves and lower levels. So um, yes, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you now to my guest, William Linville from williamlinville.com. He's coming up. Stay tuned. <laughs> So, it's my great pleasure to bring in our guest today, who is William Linville. Hi, William. How are you today? I am great, Louisa. How are you? Having a blast as always, and just singing and dancing, going with how everything unfolds and evolves. But always, you know, within the divine marriage of the higher and the lower, it's the integration of your higher and lower aspects, but also vibratory levels and frequencies and megahertz that start, you're coming down from the crown, the, the third eye, the throat, the heart level, and then you're merging down and bringing the lower chakra vortex, the root, the crater chakra vortex, your solar plexus, your carnal levels, up through the heart where we have such a beautiful divine marriage, but also a very, very celestial marriage, such a very, very celestial state that is more about open 
opening up to all that is, the whole universe and universes expanding, expanding upon, upon themselves, going all the way to eventually into nothing but your beautiful total light realms of consciousness where you're emanating, opening up, activating, and amplifying, and embodying this accelerating, accelerating, using your body as the beautiful vortex of consciousness that it is, that becomes wider, more vast, more imp amplified, to where now we go there, there's no bounds, no barriers, you know, I don't care for the word unlimited because it's just perceived. It's basically you are unlimited out of how much you can love and how wow. much love you can emanate, permeate, and receive. That's where the unlimitedness comes in. Wow, that was quite um, an introduction to you, wasn't it? Well, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking today about... Um, happiness <laughs> the vibration of happiness um, what's behind it all um and possibly where happiness might lead us or how we might enjoy happiness you know the future of humanity how we might get there um and i think i think you've already encapsulated a lot of that in just what you said um, <laughs> What, I, what I'm really curious to ask you about is, um, and I don't want to go back over the things that you spoke about recently in your Von Galt um, interview, because oh. I'm actually going to put a link into that so that people can listen to that and then we can have some kind of fresh material with ours, um, because this is such an opportunity to sort of get inside you um, or uh -huh. outside of you. <laughs> um, and so I want to make it every second count. So Awesome, awesome. <laughs> So the first the first thing I guess I really want to ask you about um and we have done a separate little video actually already about um birthing and how consciousness comes in but when people arrive here they tend to have this kind of forgetfulness um this this idea that like there's almost like a veil that comes down um or or there is something obscuring the way we can perceive what the reality of the world is and i know of some people who've had an awakening experience um who now you know all of a sudden their lives are expanded their their perspective is pers expanded and they see things completely differently now it appears that you are in your body yes and you have a fully expanded perspective with no limits would that be a correct like no limits on your ex your perception that would Is be that totally correct. Yeah. Totally correct. Excellent. Yeah. So <laughs> what I would really love to ask, um, I've got so many questions. Can I can I start with um a couple of questions from my community? Oh, first? Absolutely. Um so uh, some of some of the people in the community that I um, sit in and, and kind of have an ear out for, you know, when I said I was going to be speaking to somebody with a completely expanded, unlimited perspective, um, I asked, has anyone got a question? And um, there's a couple of questions that have come in about the kind of near future of humanity over the next few years to maybe 20 years, and then like even on further than that. Um, and the first one is, will vibrational healing such as crystal codes, tones, sound, number vibrations even, will that form part of our medical establishment where in fact what will happen with medicine well what's going to happen with medicine it, it's kind of cool it's really awesome though because doctors that whole medical profession everything that's ever been so be and so forth from all the books that are from millennia ago so much of that is going to be like basically thrown on the fireplace and burnt up and we're going into encodements of consciousness, vibratory levels and frequencies and megahertz of light to where we get into encodements of consciousness, we get into the true healing of the body, which is really when you, you break it all down, the first disease that's ever taken place was sex power and greed and more, but that all comes back to judgment. So you're going to start working with more of the being. Um, you, know, you can look at Louise Hay and, and what a beautiful manuscript she's written, but we go beyond Louise Hay right now. We go into my pancreas is acting up and I've been given this diagnosis of diabetes, blah, 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 the insulin's low or high. And, and where we go into that and what you'll find more often than not, not that I don't want to give a blanket statement, but because it's very individual. Yeah. You'll go into... The pancreas and you'll say oh okay at this point at this time in my live stream i was like one that i'm tuning in right now into right now was in the kitchen with our mother 
and there looked like she had a little brother and being forced to consume, you know, your whole veggie thing and on and on and on when her body wasn't asking for that and where she really just was struggling so hard to understand why she was being forced to consume something that did not, she did not enjoy. Now, you know, this isn't about sugar and all those uh, tabloid things. This is more about the emotion that in the pancreas, her body is still rebelling because she was in such despair, such confusion, and then feeling like she was a prisoner in her home at the dinner table, breakfast and lunch, that she didn't, she started losing herself, started losing her own consciousness to where from there, she was watching the little brother over here crying, but then breaking down and subsiding. And she made the decision to survive. I have to do what others think I should do. Now, that was like link number one of her giving her power away that started going into the potentiality, <clears throat> in this case, factuality, <clears throat> of all the emotion that was created at that point that started to become internalized into the pancreas to throw the blood sugar off. And then the dear one looks like they became somewhat obese because they were eating more out of anger, frustration, mm -hmm. rather than optimal health and well-being. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you look at this medically speaking, naturopathically speaking, you look at it through nutritionalist speaking, so forth and so forth. We can look at science too, there's no tomorrow. So we have a carrot and supposedly a carrot is good for your body versus a chocolate, I don't know, Snickers bar or something. Now, it's interesting, right? Or dark chocolate for that matter, light chocolate, milk chocolate, whatever chocolate you want. Well, you look at that, holistically speaking, from a lot bigger view right now. If I'm going to eat that carrot because I'm, quote, supposed to, because I've been told this and told that, then I've got sucked into, well, if you love yourself and your body, you'll have vegan, vegetarianism, blah, blah, blah. Now, <laughs> You know, and that's another whole different mind twist. But we get back to simplicity for a moment. We look at that chocolate bar, we look at that carrot. If I'm looking at that chocolate bar, which does not mean I have candida overgrowth and all the added on stuff, you know, it's like, huh, chocolate bar, okay, it's going to access the pleasure center of the brain a lot better than a carrot would because I'm eating the carrot out of resentment. <laughs> it's, it's going to affect my heart. It's going to start opening more and more my veins and venules. So it brings us, medically speaking, to what is healthy. Now, I'm not talking about a whole box of chicken. Uh, I'm sorry, of chocolate bars in one thing. I'm talking about what are you looking at that moment to experience and then enjoy without judgment. Now, that's a big leg segue into where medical is going, no longer based in numbers, no longer based in this, more so based in the holistic whole person, mind, body, spirit, emotion, soul, form, where the medical system is definitely going into that, which in turn, when their ones go to the doctor, they're going to find a lot more joy because they're going to find that they actually matter. They can feel the love. They can feel the acknowledgement, not just another number and you would have, could have shoved, you got to do this, blah, 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 and hop in the treadmill or something and against your will, because that's just going back to that dinner table with mom, yeah. and having a whole hurrah. And it, it, it's skipping the whole judgment game and energy game because many have so much judgment based in the medical. Now, now, I have a question for all these dear ones. Like, I'll, I'll share my own personal journey. I just had my right foot, uh, a bunion. It's kind of cool. They shave it off like a like potato chip, and then they put a couple screws in. And now I can tell you, I can fix it myself. I spent all this time. Matter of fact, I was popping it back in the place, all this fun stuff. But then it gets to a point for yourself. Mm. You know, it's kind of like why I go to the dentist, because I don't want to spend my life focusing on my teeth. Now, this is part of why we have them. Mm. And now I went and had my foot whacked up and realigned. And now I would say, well, I didn't give my power away to anyone, but let's bring it back to something that's been missing for some time these days, especially through the whole COVID thing called common sense. Now, <laughs> that is so on, on point. <laughs> it's like, well, Will, do you want to go running without this 
this thing constantly falling out of falling out of whack and it's been on my get around to list for the last 10 12 years or whatever so now i just had the free time during the whole COVID thing oh might as well i mean it's not good there's no marathons going on and then in june i'm gonna have the left one done just to match the right one so we could all be friends but yeah. is it an issue no mm -hmm. it, like i said it's been on my get around to it list it's not about pain, it's not about quorum, and, and I'm, I would never give my power away to anyone, especially medical or alternative, mm -hmm. naturopathic, because everyone has their own stuff, but I'm still waiting for the system to come forth that doesn't have a belief system. Ooh, I love that. Yes, so, so the medical system that... Um, that maybe we're waiting for or we might be collectively manifesting right now is a medical system that doesn't have a belief system underpinning it how does that work they're actually going to see you they're going to listen to what you're sharing yeah they're going to act accordingly with solutions yeah well, i love science personally mm. because there's there's a time and a place but then you look at these tests like 10 scientists had the same test different petri dishes same experiment but they came up with 10, ten different answers. Yeah. Now, and tell me how that worked. But it has everything to do with consciousness over matter. It has to do with their assumptions, which mm. throws off the actual truth of what's going yeah. on. Yeah. So we're going, we're heading to a state, medically speaking, where it's more individual. They're not carrying around 5,000 books that were written back in Rome centuries ago. They're actually able to see the dear one right in front of them. Wow. That's where the medical system's going. And it's not, you're seeing a shrink, so take this medication, that medication, or a psychologist, do this, that, and the other. No. It's about here, evolvement and freeing yourself of fear and despair. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not pro, I'm not anti-medication. I'm, I'm really glad they gave me oxycodone after my surgery. It sure made life easier. Mm -hmm. Now, and like I said, I'm not pro or con, but there's a time and a place for it all. Just not giving your power away. And you know, right now with everyone, let's just take a nice slow deep breath through your nose. I've got a fly on it. <laughs> fly oh, yeah, yeah, I saw a buzz it around. <laughs> your it's like it wants to say something. It's got something to say about, you know, what's happening to medicine. Right. Yeah, let's in, in your sweetness. Right but if we take, okay. as we take a breath through our nose all the way down to our lower tummy on the exhale, let's all within ourselves. With deep sigh, slow exhale through the mouth, your call. I am perfect as I am. I am perfect. I, I just I am. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So from here, if you go to a shrink, if you go whatever, however you go, let's go in there with your own perfection. And how can we sit by these dear ones side by side to mm -hmm. come together with a solution? Maybe it is mother issues. Maybe it's suppressed anger and rage towards the male species i mean mm -hmm. you go i it, it could be anything everything but yeah. you're getting to the cause core record and the effect of it for the same purpose of becoming free mm -hmm. when you've asked me well, will couldn't you do your foot i say yeah i got a lot of power tools but why <laughs> yeah i mean let's, i mean let's, that's why that's why sometimes we go to the restaurant and don't actually cook for ourselves you know sometimes it's just nice to have someone do something for you yeah, and it feels awesome to let them into your heart and into your live stream. Yeah. Can you imagine if we're so if we're all gonna pretend to be so so individual, individual lives, can you imagine what torment that would be? I mean, you have to learn how to run the sprinkler systems, you gotta learn how to lay the sprinkler system, you gotta learn how to build the wall, <laughs> make sheet rock, you have to even create wiring <laughs> and plumbing, and it's like why? Yeah. Why why don't we accept universally all the gifts that the universe is offering? Mm -hmm. Everything serves a purpose. Yes. Even criminals, if you get back to pol polarities, mm -hmm. they're magnetically being playing with denser levels of consciousness, which allows the light to become brighter, which in turn, their light's going to be turned on. And now mm -hmm. we're going to come back to a holistic state. Yeah. A universal state, your natural state. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, that's great. So um, just to answer um, the, the question that came through, <laughs> that this flying, flying my way. Um, so we're, we're moving back into more person-centered um, healing, 
where yeah. we have more empowerment for ourselves. Um, and, and what about things like, um, like they were asking me about crystal codes and tones and vibration. H how does that fit in? Is that, is that coming in in some way as well? Or is that just part of the package? Well, it's coming in. There's, like I said, there's a time and a place. So if we're going to play with crystal tones or even in codements of consciousness, numerology, astrology, so forth and so forth, all of it, if you can tune into it with me or imagine it, each and every one of these frequencies, tones, colors, um, even scents, they, they're activating the complete crystalline structure of your full complete makeup on a body, in a body on a planet. And your crystalline structure, you got to remember, it's an amplifier. That's when we get into laws of attraction and blah, blah, blah. Now, we're coming in through those codes. Like we sat in front of a singing bowl and we didn't force it to sound a certain way. We just let it flow a certain way. You're going to feel like an amazing impulse all the way up your whole central channel, opening up through your crown, through your lower bodies, the whole body as a whole. Then it's going to, what's going to happen? It's going to start opening, expanding, amplifying wider and wider now there's times where yeah there might be a hiccup somewhere along the line which i'm going to go back to obviously there's some sort of internalization and judgment you made about yourself from the subconscious through the emotional calibration lattice work it, it for everyone is different but right now you're going to feel a little bit of a hiccup with it and then what's going to happen is you're going to say Ah, be gone, be gone, be gone. You're going to have a memory. You may have an interesting scent that arises for you because that part isn't about your environment. That part's about what you decided as creator to be true and a reality about yourself at some point, incarnational and disincarnation and so forth and so forth. And that, that's going to, you're going to get a flash. And you say, well, you know, yeah, be gone, be gone, be gone. Because now, you're just not letting yourself have any, let's, I guess I'll call it blemish taintedness within yourself, even your crystal structure, even the encodements of consciousness. Now, universally speaking, yeah, everything runs mathematically with codes. Mm -hmm. and it runs with a 12 number system, not so much a 10 number system. And regardless, uh, mathematics, no mathematics. It's those frequencies, those tones, those encodements of consciousness. It's much like putting a key into a lock right in your heart, right in your soul level to open it up and expand that much further. Mm -hmm. And then it comes back to the mind. The pain is bad. Comfort is good. The point of life is to be underserved from the tormentors of the mind and from the comfort zone. Then we go beyond that to hmm, pain is bad. Well, no, pain is a sensation. Yeah. Comfort is good. Well, it's good to a point until you outgrow it, then that comfort becomes painful. Mm. The point of life is beyond disturbed, which makes everyone very, very individualized from that very primal, in-depth, perceptional belief system. And it's kind of like, don't put your hand over fire. Well, I'm about to encourage it due to, you know, fleshy tissue. Okay. But it's kind of like what makes it so perceivably anti rather than fluid it's like when you're you're running out in the street as a child your mom or dad or whoever comes running having a panic attack and all that and then bam you anchor it in yeah. to be like well, something wrong do you anchor it in to, it's not safe do you anchor it in to be afraid do you anchor it in with not being loved or accepted now if we could re go back to all of that it was really just a bus down the road. <laughs> down the road. <laughs> yeah. if, we're re if we're going to come back to reality a little bit, not emotion. And then using what you were saying earlier about how um, something starts and then it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows, the seed point of that new thought yeah, is not, it's just a bus. It's like, oh my goodness, I wasn't safe. And then it goes. It, exactly. Then it's grows a life of its own. That's got what four wheels, six wheels, whatever, and it's like, huh, not such a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then from that emotion that your mom's run or dad or whoever's running out there with a panic attack and their own stuff around being rescuing, well, it's like at that point, bam, you anchored in that I'm not safe. Mm -hmm. And you have all this emotion, which is emotions just energy until judgment is attached. And then the judgment's made, then the energy gets blocked up, blocked up, blocked up. 
And that's what it's, con quote, considered to be emotion. Now, if we go back to all that, when you made that decision, for all of us, mm. you made that decision. Now, let's take a breath. Because right now is a great time to undecide that decision. I'm going to undecide some things. Hang on. Yeah. And then and rather than making a new decision, because we don't, it's still clutter any way we look at it. So let's not make a new decision. Why don't we put forth, show me, show me the truth. Mm, that's a great thought. I okay. know the truth because I can say, and here's kind of the deal, Louisa. It's like I can say, "Will, good boy, good boy," like a puppy dog, and then I don't know, I run over something or crash my car into the neighbor's dog or something, and then bad boy, bad boy. Now there's still polarities. Yeah. So it's still taking up space within your consciousness, your head, your body, your organs, your crystalline structure, your encodements of consciousness that creates a little bit of a because yeah, every belief creates a, somewhat of a layer of a barrier from you mm. for embodying and connecting with yourself. Now, we flow with it, which is part of what we we're talking about, the pathway to happiness. And, um, you know, walking back to happiness, it's like, huh, I'm, gonna, I'm undeciding this, I'm undeciding that. And now, show me family, show me entourage, show me angelic archangelic in the host realm, show me higher levels, show me universe of what truly is. And that's where you're not going to feel so weight, so weighted down. You're not going to feel so contained, confined. And your body, just factually speaking, your body now has permission to go back in, regenerate itself, purify itself, divinitize itself with so much more ease and grace and fluidity. Because now we've even given the body back its power to regenerate itself. Mm. I love that um, because, um, and there's a few points I'd like to like pull, not pull you back to, but kind of um, just re-clarify. So the, the the most recent one is the idea that you're giving your body back its empowerment. So you're talking um, almost as if we are not our body. Our body is a separate thing and we are the thing in inside our body. Is, is that a true? It's animating and giving the body life. Yes. So our soul is animating our body. Yeah. Well, your soul is one part. Then there's yeah. you. You. The soul is part of the Akashic records from everything you've ever experienced from first separation to now. And it has a long hallway you walk through. You go, oh, okay. This was this incarnation. And then we go and clear that out or come to terms or um, reconcile or resolve it. And then that, once again, still taking up place within your form. Now, <laughs> There's you, you, that comes all the way down as creator, as the facet of creator that you are, that are integrating, expanding through the heart, which now there's you, you, not a soul. Because remember, souls, they have also have patternings. They have all these incarnational journeys that, and it's really fun to explore because, hmm, I wonder how my soul level is still affecting my life now. We get into fears. We get into phobias. We get into things that have had all this power over you at one time how why you acted why you reacted the way you reacted acted that's all soul level stuff yeah and that goes even beyond the primal um primality state of the body then yeah. we come back to you and we say you know how does louisa really feel about it or the, the being that has the name louisa tanner munson or <laughs> and it's kind of funny because it's actually the body that's given the name not so much yeah. So it's kind of like, well, what is a Louisa Tanner Munson? I have no idea. It's <laughs> been projected to say this is Louisa for others' comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. So they know where they stand with you. They know this. They know that. Mm. And, and wonderful for them. I mean, better than creating like chaos. But from here, it, their egos put it inside these boxes to say, ding, ding, ding. Louisa is safe. Now, you take uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all filtered from the comfort zone levels. But then once we get rid of the name, we get rid of, I mean, hypothetically gender, all the personal identificational levels. Mm -hmm. Now we just have peel all that away, and now we just have you, that beautiful facet of creator, expressing inside such a beautiful openness, vibrancy, communion, but pure gold, pure light. And now we get into your light bodies, on and on and on. 
Wow, that's an amazing answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so I'm so grateful, uh, you know, that we're meeting at this time um, because you know we've this is recorded and I'm going to get the chance to listen again and again and again because um, there's, there's a lot of depth there. I love it. Thank you. And um, and at some level, I know this. That's the funny thing, you know. Um, uh, before before we started. Um, you know, actually meeting or communing here today, I already had this sense of knowing um, a bit like how lots of people have a knowing about where they come from or this, this sense of where we're coming from. Um, so yeah, you're reminding me, I think this is a remembrance. Um, you're reminding me of a, a whisper or a faint echo of the past that I know somewhere inside me. But I love it. it. It's unlocking the locks that have kept yeah. it seemingly not accessible. Yes. So let, me, let me ask you a question. How do you feel about royalty, castles, um, kings, queens, and everyone in between? Um, I, I'm kind of ambivalent about it. Um, I feel nothing. I don't feel much about royalty on um, Earth or the idea of Earth. I don't feel much about. Yeah. I, I don't really connect into, like, if we were talking about past lives and things or future lives, um, I don't have much of a sense of anything here exactly. in, in this place, but I do have a sense of um, uh, regality from a different time and place that's not here. Because yeah, and the reason I brought this up because a moment ago you were presenting like Game of Thrones ish kind of thing. You had to outlive <laughs> your enemy, skipping the dragons and all that, the big lizard. <laughs> Are I've never sure? even seen Game of Thrones, but <laughs> no, I haven't either. But it, it, I've seen the little captions. But the thing is, is that we're walking down. Uh, it's almost like a, I guess now we'd call it like a dungeon, but it was dark, um, damp, mm -hmm. and looking around at the dear ones being chained to the wall or locked inside. Mm -hmm. it looks almost like horse stalls with with uh, bars that right now you're walking up the stairs coming out of to no longer have that. Cause you know, at times where you just feel like a thud or a weight of heaviness for no apparent reason. Oh yeah. Definitely. That's exactly where that's coming from. Wow. Yeah. So you look at this and it's like, huh, it's not like we're pro or con, but it's parts of ourself, which I call soul fragmentations. Mm -hmm. have still been playing out dimensionally in all these different levels, all these different realms that have been playing out dimensionally that you're saying, okay, you know what? No more, no more. And you're welcoming those parts back to yourself, but this mm -hmm. time cleared and purified and divinitized. You're not welcoming back the gunk. You're welcoming back your consciousness and those soul fragmentations that you're saying, all right, hey, man, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye to Sayonara, have a blast, namaste, see you on the backside, you know, however you want to go about it. But, it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like, been there, done that, wore a t-shirt a thousand times, be gone. And yeah. where you're, like right now, you can feel it right there in the left side of your solar plexus. Mm. Yes, it's interesting, actually. I have um, any issues that I seem to have in my body have always been on my left-hand side. Oh, exactly. And this was a, this was a big one. Uh, yeah, torment, um, sadness, and despair when you were basically mutiny broke out and you got locked away in these areas. Yeah, like royalty wise, and stripped of pretty much everything. Mm. Almost like a, a new age version of Snow White relived. <laughs> I do feel like that. <laughs> you go outside and um, speak, you know, speak to the plants, and I, I feel like even if there's not birds tweeting around me, I. I I still feel that I have the energy. Right now, I've got these flies flying around me like I'm mm -hmm. Snow White of the fly world. Just put your arms out so they can land in your hands. and <laughs> They probably would. Actually, where we've just moved to, this, this is rather magical, where we've just moved to, there are fireflies at night. Yeah. And um, um, as as me and my family were driving to actually move in, we were arriving really late at like 10.30 at night. And... You know, you know how um, it is with, when you're with your family, someone will say, oh, can you put my favorite song on? And my son said, can you put my favorite song on? And it's called Fireflies. And so <laughs> we put the song on. And then as we drove up, 
and um, walked in and walked into our bedroom and there's a firefly waiting for us. And then just in this last few weeks, our, our whole front lawn at night is covered in fireflies. And so we go out in our pajamas and one torch, <laughs> all of us. <laughs> we actually, my son is actually able to, they, they land on him. They really like him. So oh, awesome. it really, really resonates. Um, there was something I was going to come back to you um, on, um, you've already mentioned, and that was about the 12 number system. Because one of the questions uh, that came into me was, what is like obviously um you're talking about our experience right here and and how we can cope and you know like we have this soul fragmentation going off to lots of different things pulling at us and reminding us and we're all part of this big web but one of the um, one of the questions that that i had was about what obviously you can remember your life from other places not just earth Mm -hmm. um and so you understand the mechanics mm -hmm. of how the universe is knitted together yeah um, and and one of them one of the questions was is it a number system is it a light system is it a vibration i mean that sounds very sort of like 3d you know that we're like specifying light vibration frequency number because probably they're all the same thing anyway but from um i guess from my muggle perspective <laughs> and the fact that you, <laughs> we're all kind of muggles in in in, in your presence could you share with me a bit more about the the sort of num the system that holds everything together outside of our earthly realm if that's of any use well yeah it, it's a 12 number system and then it goes into what i call encodements of consciousness that goes into yeah. geom geometrical i guess i would say designs uh okay. it's when you look at even when you're downloading or data is flowing through it's not in words it's in numbers and symbols mm -hmm. now you take these symbols going all the way back to Atlantis said the chip was a rejuvenation that was all about the crystalline attributes and repolarization magnetics to reverse the aging process. Now you go here, and this is why I was looking about a little bit ago of disidentifying with the mind, the body, even the name and all the stuff that that meant. Cause what happens when you do that, you start accelerating, accelerating, expanding, but then, you know, it's kind of cool because now you're able to expand your consciousness to the other side of Pluto all the way through the whole ideals of black holes, the whole ideals of black holes. Is there dimensional portals that you go through? It's almost like a time warp per se, because time's not real anyway. It's just once again, all in the head. Mm. So you go beyond that and the, you go beyond all the examples of, okay, 30 years old, this happens, 40, that happens, 50, based in everything you've seen experienced around you, not based in you though. And you step out of all of that and you go through the 12 number system, including, because all of it comes back to crystalline structures, then it comes back to magnetic uh, lattice works, grid systems, grids within grids, throughout grids that all come up and then come back to the emanation of purification of light beingness where we're emanating or activating and even as that crystal beingness you start to watch your body become more crystalline but not solid you start to watch it going back to teletransportation telekinesis and all this fun stuff even to telepathy where you send a thought to a dear one and they receive it that's all based in magnetics it's all based in emanations but yet you're you're not out of your body you're expanded so far beyond it that none of the magnetics are holding you into a solid state anymore. Does that better clarify that? <laughs> well, I, I want to thank you um, for sharing that because I, as I asked that, you know, asking you to explain the makeup of the universe and all that is, oh um, it occurred to me that it could be such a vast concept that you couldn't actually put it into our words because that's the experience of it because um you know when i um when i work with clients i often go into a state where i think you know i'm like channeling or it just all of a sudden there is this state of isness as you say um where i kind of know a uh, knowingness and 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 it happens in a like that and if i was to explain it in words i couldn't explain the whole frequency or the occurrence of the knowing that I had I couldn't possibly be able to put it all into words in one go um so yeah I really appreciate how you were <laughs> representing the universe in in that way um my my next question would be what is beyond that what is beyond the numbers where did they all come from or where did the frequency where did the light come from is it just it just is 
like you know people talk about a god force or god or the you know like what's what's behind everything well what i would call it <laughs> i would say if we get like god and all that stuff out of it and just go to what i would call your central source intelligence it's it's at the source the source yeah that's the term i most often use the source of everything yeah and then it looks like a big like a like a big but not solid sort of sun that mm -hmm. that has split itself off in quadrillions of facets into more and more it's almost like a heart with all the veins and the venules and nerves going into universes after universes after universes after universes after universes, after universes to where there's not really a solid being there's not like you know hey dad what's up you know <laughs> or god or however we want to do about it the whole god concept came from humanity of course that's us putting our perception onto our experience is that yeah. right yeah so what happens is that you, it it's pure untainted unmanifest consciousness that decided upon itself to split itself off so now we have two sources. Like when I was talking about the heart with all the veins and the nerves, we have this universe. Now we have another universe. And what the, what happens is they, this is where it's got a little bit confusing that you're reflecting this in me, that in me. I mean, there's a little bit of truth to that, but it's like creator created a, or a source that projected its consciousness to create another source. So then it has something to reflect to, something to, really honor acknowledge itself with and by then it created another one and another one now we have all these sources they're not in conflict not in competition that's solar plexus humanity stuff. my god's bigger than your god and now we have wars and big toys but the creator reflecting upon itself expanding here expanding there expanding there expanding there expanding there and acknowledging and even accessing and activating its own beauty and reflecting its own beauty upon beauty to, well, I'm calling it beauty, but it's not how it really operates. Cause there's, there's no polarity. It's not ugly, pretty. It just is. And where it reflects here to there to learn and expand about upon itself. Now humanity has those same facets within itself, but it's so odd, right? You go into a grocery store or you dress up, you go out to dinner with your partner, you go into a boardroom, whatever. And the first thing they're once do is they look at you and they judge you. Not even on purpose. They're not even aware of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's not source admiring source. That's the ego attempting to size up the area to decide if it's safe or not safe. Yeah. It's kind of fun, right? So if you bring that source back to yourself, you know, it's like you are that light beingness. You are that love. You are that light that you are. You are your higher levels. Higher levels mean, and higher self means, it, it really means parts of you, the real you, I guess I would call it, that's accelerated, accelerated in height and height and frequencies and vibratory levels and frequencies of light that are making its way into the physical form and also opening up the physical form. So physical form speeds up, speeds up, to where eventually we get into a divine marriage. Mm -hmm. no, no split, no polarity. So we look at the body, we look at the vibratory level frequencies in the body, we look at what we deem to be perceivably real, not real, until and even is real. So from here, we go beyond it all to where now we our eyes start to open, our consciousness starts to expand. The third eye goes or activates from the mid the frontal lobe of the brain, the master cell, the midbrain, the back of the brain, the right left sides of the brain, it goes all the way down the vertebrae column with that has this beautiful charge that bam, the light switch just came on. And now we have wholeness again. Now we look upon the world, not with emotion. Emotion once again is just judgment this blocked energy and then you have you have an emotional outburst or an emotional breakdown i've never heard of a love breakdown i'm waiting for that one because <laughs> there's no judgment there's no pinned up anything mm. and now it's it on stem flow yeah that's beautiful and um, so you're talking about this divine marriage then um between our physical body and the 
the amount of light and love that we're able to what ground into the body, accept, not judge, let in. Uh, I don't know the exact words. I would say welcome because welcome. the stuff coming up for you is all the stuff that's kept that perceivably at bay, like two magnets trying to pull towards each other. And and it's not just about the judgments, it's about projected perceptional realities, it's about assumptions, it's about yeah. everything we've deemed to be real, everything we deem to be possible. But now we're taking all this stuff and now we're going like that mm -hmm. to see what is. And also to experience what is. And to answer those other uh, dear ones questions is that, you know, it's also part of opening up your world, your life, and whether it's the intimate love, loving relationship with the heart, the marriage of the heart, whether it's finances, whether it's whether it's parenting, guidance, purification, you know, divination. Well, yeah, this is very practical in every area of your life because it was designed and created that way to have you wake up, become alive within your life. Mm. Not Enlightenment Olympics, more about going direct with you as you and watching what begins to unfold and things move out new manifestations come in to honor mm. you and love you yes is not that fun <laughs> yes it is it really really is um i've had fragments of that coming in and in I've, i'm not one of these people that's just like woken up and gone boom um, I'm, I'm just on my journey <laughs> uh, exactly. in, in arising and unveiling evolving yeah. and then receiving as well yes and it is a blast it really is um it's interesting what you're saying about the uncovering because in the actual song walking back to happiness which is uh -huh. a kind of play on words with our title for the show today there's the lyrics i never knew i'd miss you and now i know what i must do and also I shouldn't have gone away, so I'm coming back today. So there's these two sets of lyrics about the kind of reunion, the rejoining. And obviously that song, I'm sure, was just written about love, but at some level um, it, it is about the sort of the rejoining of ourselves to the, the universal consciousness or the awareness of it. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. Um, speaking of higher consciousness, it would be rude of me not to mention the Higher Self Expo because that's coming up and you're a guest speaker oh. at the Higher Self Expo. It's taking place on the 17th and 18th of July. There's 33 guest speakers um, across the world. It's a 24-hour oh. event and you are a speaker. Tell me, share with me, what are you going to be telling us about at the Higher Self Expo, William? Well, I was going to be speaking and exploring the superseding of mind over matter. Mm. Kind of a little bit of what we're playing with today and, and then transcending magnetics. Because if you would imagine, there's all these dear ones, we can call it sheep, we can call it sheep or wherever we want, going here, going there, and then eventually going off the cliff or maybe a different direction, all yeah. wolves and everything else coming at it. Well, let's go back to the purity of let's call it the lion and the dove or the lamb and the dove, any way you call to it, it calls for you. Now, let's call that your purity, your innocence, your, mm -hmm. your pure benevolence. Then we see this go on, we see that go on. Maybe the, going back to first separation when, you know, there's all these different tribes coming anti, like, I love what you have, so I'm gonna take what you have and keep what I have. and that went into relationships it went into well, you have you have a female and i like your female so i'm going to kill you take her and or same vice versa with masculines well all this stuff started getting created i call it sex power and greed from all these polarized states of separation segregation now i've heard this a lot it's like okay well now i got to get back to the real world well what because now we're getting back to you not others perceptions projections and not what you've been taught not what you've been told not what you've been fed but now coming back to you to undecide to no longer let the ego which is a separate deity uh, within itself control you dominate you hold you and tell you this is this possible not possible and then you're this you're that you shouldn't be of this and you're not good enough you're not lovable you're not successful blah 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 which all of that's just a lot of hullabaloo but unfortunately dear ones have bought into it to where now they have this matrix all around them it's almost like a holographic uh reality 
based in, unfortunately, everyone else's projections, perceptions upon them rather than who they know they are, but have started doubting oneself. So listen to everyone else. Then we get into, you know, exploring it, looking at it, addressing it. So it's kind of like, I'm a this, I'm a that. Well, hmm, it says what? You know, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, it's going to feel like that. Okay, well, all right, show me. Without putting in projecting the mind into potential outcomes, to where we're taking your power back even from the mind, especially from the ego through the mind back to you, and from the soul through the soul back to you, and then we open you up and go expand through the soul, through the, sub the emotional calibration lattice work, the sub-psyche, through the psyche, to where now we can let all this stuff be moved away, dissolved, the broken down, collapsed, to where now you really can let all the blinders be gone, opening up, expanding, emanating, permeating exponentially, to now see what we'll call true reality without a belief system about it. Wow. Doesn't that sound like fun? It really does. In fact, um, my husband really likes the work of Barry Long. Um, and I think he's, he predicts that at the end of the world, all will be silent. You know, all you'll hear is the sound of children playing and birds singing because all thought has kind of been blown out. <laughs> Our minds have been totally blown. Um, and, and actually, we're all just kind of in peace <laughs> or in pieces. Um, we are. <laughs> but we are like you know the the need to judge has kind of left us yeah and the need to defend a false mm -hmm. of yourself yeah yeah i really feel that and yes it does sound like fun um and do you think um when you were talking about or alluding to the um the, the divine marriage of the um the universal energy the light and the body do you think there will be a, a, a mass awakening in in my lifetime or in our lifetimes well it's actually gradually already happening that's why you yeah. see all the see before like all the unrest in the world you know yeah. governments political personal shootings blah 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 yeah and all the way to volcanic activities um sinkholes and all that fun stuff well in all the fires well you're watching all this stuff that's been so locked into place to be in in secrecy behind closed doors blah blah blah. you're watching all of it step by step being exposed from the me too movement you too we too and all that other stuff yeah that stuff that's been hidden away in secrecy mm -hmm. all that stuff is happening right now it's all being unveiled and purged not yes. to now just someone else for the behavior. It's more of exposure for long-term beneficial change. The, yeah. Here in the U.S., the Capitol building, blah, blah, blah. All the superstitions of all the stuff that it meant. It's a building, I mean, any way you look at it. Mm -hmm. But it's like you're watching, dear ones, all that unrest that's been hidden away under the rug come up, be exposed, and then, of course, become purified and divinitized. You watch. Yeah. All the politicians all over the planet, uh, prime ministers, blah, 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 all this stuff. They, even especially like with the royal family right now, all that stuff still unveiling, coming up to a head. A lot to unveil. Uh, what's that, sweetheart? There's a lot to unveil. Yeah, and purify. And mm -hmm. that's part yeah. of the beauty because it's not about going into chaos. It's actually the dissolvement of the underlying cause of the chaos. Mm. We, yes. can, we can get into Black Lives Matter. Every life matters. So we, and we're coming more into that. And even the planetary grid, yeah, fire, sinkholes, things like that, which is kind of cool year because the sinkholes, you know, it's interesting. All these places where you would never perceive there's water, which I've been saying for eons, and all the fear about lack, shortage, blah, blah, blah. Well, isn't it interesting how the planet is under underneath the grid system, underneath the uh platelets you're watching all these ravines open up with all this water i mean basically for everyone but pure water not oceanic not polluted where you're watching all this stuff open up in the most un uh unexpected ways and places but nevertheless you're getting what you're asking for which is more water and you're watching the planet evolve but also wake up and even the soul double journey that have been locked into the grid of the planet so forth and so forth all the experiences that ever been experienced in a in a on in a body on a planet and for the planet it's all coming up to be revealed and released 
to where now this is it comes back to that whole uh, latest and greatest dialogues about the new earth well you're on it and mm -hmm. you're watching it rebirth itself now it can be a little bit inconvenient when you have an elm tree growing in your living room but they were there first and yes. and now it's like huh now how best can we be in nature without trying to dominate it mm, that's a fantastic question the fires blazing all over the place but yeah i look at the places that this is occurring mm. and it's the denser levels of energy denser levels of density that are being woken up shaken up and all the way to <clears throat> You know, California, wherever, however, how you're watching, you know, <clears throat> the ones that perceive they are their bank accounts, mm -hmm. have everything removed, and then bam, they wake up, they're more joyful than ever. Of course, this stuff will come and go, it'll return, but it's like where it's not identified to anymore, to where now it's kind of like the whole COVID thing, where it's been so awesome to watch all these dear ones go into lockdown into their homes and with their hypothetical loved ones to really get to re-explore and really ask yourself, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And what really matters to me? And who's this woman or who's this child or who's this male that's sitting next to me? I know in my head, okay, on paper, wife, daughter, husband, whatever, whatever, but how do I really feel now? Mm -hmm. And it's that beautiful read communion, not about being afraid of some spore in the air, more about the heart opening, which accelerates the vibrate, vibrational frequencies of your body that totally makes you immune with or without the inoculations. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny to really think about it. I don't want to get the coronavirus, so I'm going to get a shot of the coronavirus. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. I always thought it was like, you know, first, you know, find your beach, like the Corona commercials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. Where we've just moved to, it's got a beautiful Ooh. beach just next to it. And you know, when you, you, you're grounded, you've got your feet on the beach or on a lovely lawn and you're just in the fresh air. Um, I just do as much of that sort of connection as I can, because that's, that's where I feel truly healthy. Oh. Um, it's so weird being cooped up, isn't it? Um, this is wonderful. I really enjoy um, chatting. Um, it's so lighthearted. Um, is it okay to ask you a couple more questions? Because I'm aware that I've had you for quite some time. I right. mean, I can carry on forever, but <laughs> I, have a, I have a couple more minutes if you want to run. Yeah. Through. Sure. Okay. Um, if if well. <laughs> There's actually so many. I don't think I can fit them in. So actually, I should ask you just a couple of wrap up questions. Yeah. So if someone has absolutely enjoyed the riff um, of, you know, how you are and and wants to get in contact with you because they think I really want to. Damn, I really, really need to work with William. How can they connect with you? What's your preferred way? Well, the best way would be is to go on our website, uh, williamlinville.com and mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you fill out an intake form and then you'll get the schedule and then you can schedule um, an appointment and also to know to learn more i mean you can go on contact mike at williamlinville.com or mary at williamlinville.com mm -hmm. you know, or really any of the staff that we have that will be able to you know we have a lot of stuff on the website um different topics different recordings all this fun stuff in videos that that can assist, but to make an appointment, you go through the intake list, you sign up for the web the email, and then you'll look, you'll get the calendar, you schedule an appointment. If it's something you feel to be more like more dramatic or something that you're really struggling with, you can always contact my wife, Mary at WilliamLilva.com to see if she can She'll put you on a waiting list if nothing's available, but she'll do her best to get you in so magically. She's so good at that um, for things that are really, really taking a toll on you in your life. Mm. Or your okay. So the, the way in which you help people um, is uh, what you just, you uh, commune with them and are just able to communicate what they need to hear. Well, and I tune into them, their higher levels, what's going on in their life, why it's going on, and then, you know, going through the soul level, all the way to your creator consciousness, and then through the body principle, removing all the struggles, beliefs, beliefs, but also physical, like I mentioned earlier, diabetes, and yeah. 
you know, get to the consequence of the record, effect of it, bind it out, including vows, contracts, and agreements, into these energy thought forms, in anything and everything that is um, blocking you or where you feel blocked. Fantastic. Fantastic. You know, with relationships and all that fun stuff. Excellent. Okay, so my absolute last question for you today is um, if there was one thought that that you could leave with everyone that's that's listening in today, what would that be? One thought that might bring them, um, I don't know, a, a sense of peace or happiness. What would that be? What is there not to love? That's a good question. Yeah. Because you ask yourself, not to love. We can say this child over there, or we can say the robbers, the rapists, whatever, whatever. You know, you tune into them. You go into their emotional age of capacity. So, me look like an adult figure body wise, but it's still just little boy or little girl, this little child that is still seeking yearning and asking for some sort of assistance, some sort of acknowledgement, you know, even recognition, clarity, and obviously to be seen, addressed, and also healed up at times. Now, you look at that, and what I'm really getting at isn't about their behaviors, because you see their behaviors, but what's really going on with them that has them exhibit those behaviors. Now, it frees you more than anyone because it opens up your heart. You start to understand why that dear one over there that you just considered to be your enemy is pretty whacked out. Well, let's get to why because that frees you of your judgment and also frees them as it frees you to where now you're opening up a whole nother level, a whole nother part of your world universally and through the physically, the physical realm, where we're no longer feeling all alone because it's unfortunate how many dear ones are awake, but they feel like they're on a planet by themselves, whether mm -hmm. it's a family monad, whether it be their current relationship, whether it be a marriage, whether it be parenting, whether it be an employee, employer, they feel very alone. Mm -hmm. Now, I ask this question, you know, what is there not to love? Because this is where we free ourselves and all that stuff around us unravels to where now more dear ones of that love, of that vibrational frequency, of that common open-hearted communion connection. Because everyone on this planet, a blanket statement, everyone on the planet is looking for love. Mm -hmm. Many are looking in the wrong places. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> love has nothing to do with sex. Spirituality has nothing to do with sex. Sex is a way to express love. Yeah. But it has nothing to do with love. Yeah. Wow. Money is great. Money is love. Now, it's great to love money, but it's not about money, what people, the only issue around abundance is not about abundance, the paper and the copper and the silver. It's about what dear ones do with it. Mm. And I'm kind of planning a lot of speech right now to free everyone here from their own poverty consciousness, their own conflicts around abundance and money. And it's so interesting. I just won a million bucks. Yay. And then here comes the next thought. How am I going to protect it? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, you can enjoy it. Yeah, That's exactly. Cool. And it is love. It's the universe showing you more love and more love and more love. So there's no separation between that and someone, uh, a hug from some someone. Mm. Wow. So it's just a, it's a question that goes very deep, but it's very life altering and changing. Yeah. In fact, um, um, I, I did actually forget one of one of the people in my community was asking about um, what's likely to be happening with money over the coming years. Like there are talks about global currency resets and things like that. I've heard about um, like a, a worldwide sort of dominant version of one. And I've heard of a very sort of light and fluffy one myself. But um, yeah, there was that that question about global currency reset. Is there something like that coming up, do you think? No. No. What I do see, though, like, I mean, this has been going on for eons. Like, okay, we need to go <laughs> buy all these all these uh, gems. Okay, now we got to go buy metal. We have to buy gold, silver, yeah. copper. <clears throat> and then I got to get a big safe to bury it in my backyard. You know, all these 
and in Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and all this other stuff. Yeah, it's all wonderful to branch out, but <clears throat> paper money <clears throat> and coins, it's always going to be here. I mean, just simplify. Yeah, we can go back to because many are being presented with going back to the old days where, okay, let me say, here's a bag of flour and you're going to give me a bag of wheat. Mm -hmm. That, that it, same thing, just a different kind of bartering. Yeah. Or I'll give you 10 bags of sugar if you'll mow my lawn or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's not where it's heading. We're a lot more evolved than that. And it's definitely not, not all becoming digital either. What's where it's going as a whole is more and more human connection human camaraderie mm -hmm. so when we hand you a dollar you're going to take the dollar but we have this human connection through the body we're not identified with sex power greed blah 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 we're more in our heart expressing as i hand you this dollar it's unconditional yes yeah. i may give you a hundred bucks if you're struggling i may blah 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 but it still comes back to that um, open-hearted human connection and camaraderie ship and honoring. Yeah. Not, not, no longer domination, control. No longer people giving their power away to a dollar or mm -hmm. coins or metals or the minerals. It's just people um, feeling the impulse to be of service. Totally. And yeah. <clears throat> More than service, I would say more and more camaraderie to where our income status isn't low, medium, high. It's, hey, we're all in together. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Not to really not that. deny the abundance, but to not let it run your life and what you do when you do it. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so very much for your time today. Um, uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. I've, oh, like really laughed. <laughs> I've laughed so much. <laughs> it's been really cheerful <laughs> and um, joyous, and I'm really grateful for that. So thank you so much. Um, so, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> thank you for coming. I can't even say thank you properly because I'm so like, sort of like <laughs> oh, well, this has been so, so awesome. So thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> and being able to assist together. Yeah. Yes, it's an absolute pleasure. Wow. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that as much as I have. Um, I was so full of, I just feel so joyous and, and full of light. And what you wouldn't have seen is that um, before we actually started recording together, um, when um, I met William, it, it was um, lovely. He, he just started asking me lots of questions, which is kind of fun because obviously I was just um, there to um, connect with him and ask him about his world. But he, he wanted to kind of connect with me and almost gave me a free reading, you know, gave me, um, he really tuned into me. Um, and, and that was really beautiful. I wish I'd recorded it actually. I'd forgotten to press record, but, um, yeah, it was, it was a truly wonderful experience. So I firsthand can share <laughs> straight away, um, that yeah, he, he can tune in and tap into you and, and, and really help you out. So anyway, I hope you found that useful. I've just um, spoken to him behind the scenes and he's agreed to chat again. So if you've enjoyed this and you want to hear more of it, then send us or send me, um, send me a request for what you'd like to know about um, and I'll set something up. Um, he, he's really happy to help and, and chat and, and give freely of his time. So yes, thank you so much for joining us wherever you've reached us from in the world. Um, I'm based in Portugal and he was joining me from Chattanooga in the US. So this is kind of an international thing, but yeah, please do like subscribe and share, um, share the love of this <laughs> and hopefully we can connect again real soon. Thanks so much for your participation. Lots of love to you. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this conversation, then why not support today's guest at the Higher Self Expo in July 2021? The Higher Self Expo is a worldwide 24-hour event with 33 guest speakers who are all sharing their wisdom and exploring the connection between science and spirituality. To register your place and find out more, go to www.higherselfexpo.com.